Welcome back to another video. So we have some more wheels to alter. So what needs doing with these is these are, I don't know where his customers got these from, the new tractor rims, but the 12 stud centers, and he wants them to fit on an eight stud commercial axle. So you'd think it'd be a nice simple job. You just cut out a new center, bolt it into there. But just like any other job I get, it's not as straightforward as that. So this is, the stud pattern that's to go in this center, this is one that the customer's cut out of another wheel. So he's brought this one up, um, just so I can, you know, in case I needed to use that. But the problem is when you put the nuts on there and you measure across from like the outside of that nut to the outside of that nut, that distance is more than what this center measurement is. So if you, if you just laid that straight on top of there, you wouldn't be able to tighten the nuts up because you wouldn't, you know, there wouldn't be enough room physically for the nut to fit. Because the nut on the, on the new, new center would be, would overlap like that. And the customer wants the new center to be on the other side of the old center. So he's, he's losing like 15 mil each side on the overall width of the machine. So the only way around it without having to put longer studs in and spaces and complicating the job is just to cut this center out bigger. So then if I cut that center out bigger, this hub will fit through this hole and then bolt onto the plate on the other side. And then there'll be enough room. If there's enough room for the hub, you know, then obviously there's going to be enough room for the bolts. So that is the plan. There's, obviously there's two of these wheels to do, the other one's still outside. So what I'm going to do is cut that centre hole out bigger. So I don't have a proper like circle cutter for the gas torch. Um, I know you can buy the kits, but it's bank holiday Monday, so nowhere's open. So I'm going to do what I usually do and just improvise and well, make make a circle cutter. So I've got this just simple thing that I've made from my plasma cutter, but I haven't got my plasma cutter fixed yet and it's also not got enough power to cut through that thickness. Uh, my normal gas torch is too long to fit in there, so I'm going to use this little torch, still uses the same nozzles. So that'll fit in there like that. And what I'll have to do is just chop this bolt off move it to, uh, it wants to be 200 mil centers from there to there, weld it back on. And then I'll have to put some it in the other side with a center hole in it and then bolt that adapter to it. And then I can cut out, um, cut a, a circle. Right, so that's in there now. Obviously when I cut this bit off, I'm gonna be cutting my bit of plate off as well, but I'll do all that first and then do them bits last. Um, hopefully that should, as long as I can hold the torch nice and straight in there, that should give me a nice circle. And it doesn't need to be super, super accurate because you know, the hub is not fitting on that bit anymore. And then when I weld my new centre in, I can 
centre it off the bolt holes or off the outside, whatever. So yeah, this doesn't need to be super accurate, it just needs to be big enough so that hub can fit through. Right, so that's the centres, or the centre cut out. Um, I had my phone set up in there and then I forgot to press record, so I'll have to show you when I do the next one, but yeah, that's not done. I've ground it around and cleaned that up. So now that's big enough for the hub to fit through. And uh, so I can weld me the plate on that side now with the bolt holes in. What I'm gonna do, I think, is chop off these corners like across there. So then when I weld it round, I can weld it round into the hole, back out and carry on. And um, do away with that sharp corner. Right, I've got you sat on there. Remember to press record this time. So I'm just going to nick them corners off now. Right, so that's that one done for now. So now I can weld around there, weld in the hole, back round again, back out again, and then rather than just welding that bit and then stopping. And then I've still got a good amount of overlap when I put the new plate in from the other side. So it'll be welded around this side and then it'll be welded all the way around the outside on the other side of the rim. So it should be nice and strong. So I'll bring the other one in now and do the same with the other one.
Right, so that's that cut out. Um, I'll do the same. I'll cut them corners off. You've already seen me do that, so I'll be back in a minute once I've got that done. Right, so that's that one done now. So they're both at the same stage. So I'll, I'll bring some plating now and cut some centers out. Same as that, but slightly bigger. Right, so we're gonna draw this wheel center. Now, so I know that it's, it's a 335 PCD. So if I draw that first, and then 26 mil studs, so like that 26 mil, and half a 335 is 167.5. So that's that one in the right place. And then we want 10 of them. So that's them. And then we want the center hole in the middle wants to be 282. So that's that. And then we want the outside diameter to be 505. 505. And that is it done. So I'll make it 15 mil. So yeah, that's the wheel centre done. That's what it's going to look like. So we'll put that in sheet cam, set up all the cut parameters and everything, lead in, leads out, and then we can get that plasma out. Right, so that's that cut out. Um, two of them didn't cut out very well. I had to put a new nozzle in, so I've just had to clean them up with a die grinder. So we have a commercial axle up in the yard, so I'm just going to try it, make sure it's right before I cut the other one out. So that's all right, that fits on there nice. Might just have to diagram a little bit out of the holes where the lead in and the lead out was, but overall that's good. So I'll cut the other one out now. Right, so that's the second one cut out. Um, they have holes cut out better. I, I slowed the the feed rate or the speed down quite a lot to do the holes. Plasmas are not known to being very good at cutting holes out, but for 15mm plate, they've come out alright. 
and then there's that one sat in there so i'll get these cleaned up i'll ground the paint off the rim and then i'll get them tacked in measure them make sure they're right and then i can weld them around So I've got that wheel centre tacked in. What I could do with doing now is turning it over, making sure that drum is going to fit in properly through the bit that I cut out. And then if that fits all right, then we can weld it, weld it in solid on both sides. So I've got that brake drum sat in there now, and you can see all the holes are lining up, and the clearance for the drum all the way around. So that's. Spot on is that. So I'll put some tacks on this side. I didn't put enough tacks on the other side really. If I'd have put more tacks on the other side, I could have welded this side up first, but um, I'll, I'll put plenty of tacks on this side and then I'll have to turn it back over again and then fully weld around the other side and then fully weld around the inside. That's this side welded all the way around. Um, I might just try the hub in again to make sure the hub doesn't catch on the welds. So I'll just lift that back in again and make sure we're all right. And then I'll flip it over and weld around the other side.
Right, so that's that one welded all the way around. Um, I just did it by hand, walked around it. I need to get a rotator really, but by the time I'd got it set up on a rotator, I could have welded it round by hand anyway. So it's a bit tricky when you're reaching in down there and you're sort of looking at a bit of a funny angle. It's not easy, but it's in. So this one's tacked in. So I'll do the same with this one. I'll turn it over, make sure the drum fits, and then weld it round. Right, so I've been around them centres another two times. So there's three welds on this side and one weld on the other side. So that should be plenty adequate for them. So I'll get some red oxide on them and then that's that's them done. So that's that job done. Not as exciting job as some of them, but a bit of work gone into them. So still got the log splitter to finish. So that might be coming up soon. I haven't got any further with that yet. And then there's still my tractor puller engine to rebuild that seemed seemed like people were interested in that so i might do a video on that and i should have a new machine coming soon so that'll be quite ex exciting well maybe two new machines but one's a bit more exciting than the other so yeah stick around for that so thanks for watching um, and i'll see you next time